Last five eight, show to the end. The stock market can be a scary place, so Ed and Ruth Ann Wolf turned to a broker. The first thing I told him and the last thing I told him was I was not a gambler. The Wolfs got burned by high-tech and internet stocks. A big strain. You don't lose, your, lose all your money and feel good about it. But did they also get taken by their broker? For 32 and a half years, he saved and saved. And in less than a year, Merrill Lynch destroys his retirement dreams. Ruth Ann and Ed Wolf had dreams, simple dreams. Oh boy. To spend more time with their grandchildren, in part because Ruth Ann has battled breast cancer twice. At the age that my wife is, uh, the illness starts to multiply and we were hoping to use our motorhome quite a bit to travel before something happened to one or the other of us. Instead, Ed now travels every day alone. Instead of being retired, Ed drives off in the afternoon to work a night shift for a trucking company full time. The bitterness that he has, it goes into our life. And all he could think about was Joel Cessna and what he did to him. Joel Cessna is a broker in Worcester for Merrill Lynch. Do you think you advise the Wolves properly? Can you tell me that? I can't comment. When Ed Wolf took an early retirement buyout after 32 years at Rubbermaid, he and Ruth Ann went to see Cessna to plan their retirement. And I didn't want any gambling with my money, and I wanted very little risk. A spokesman for Merrill Lynch says Cessna advised the Wolves that they could not be as conservative as they wished and still make the 8% return they wanted on Ed's money. The market investments were not conservative. Cessna put Ed Wolf's money mostly in high-tech and Internet stocks. The biggest single investment, $65,000, went into Merrill Lynch's own Internet Strategies Fund. Merrill Lynch says the Wolves agreed to Cessna's plan. The couple says they didn't even know what the plan was. He had all the investments already done. I knew nothing about any of them, not a one. In January of 2000, Ed and Ruth Ann gave Merrill Lynch $325,624 that Ed had saved over 32 years. In two years, they lost $172,000. Their biggest investment, the Merrill Lynch Internet Strategies Fund, went from $65,000 to $15,000. Something that you had worked for all your life and uh, uh, overnight it was stripped from you. 32 years of savings down the drain. I want to hold this broker and this firm accountable. New York attorney Jake Zemanski, who specializes in these cases, sued Merrill Lynch on behalf of the Wolfs. In a decision that may have national implications, a panel of three arbitrators awarded the Wolfs $310,000, including attorney's fees, almost double what they had lost. This case sets the bar. Wall Street firms will be held accountable if they put unsuspecting customers who are in retirement into risky high-tech stocks. But if I'm a Wall Street firm, can't I say the stock market is inherently risky? You come into the stock market, you could lose your money. That's the way it works. It's not buyer beware. It's broker, make sure you're recommending the right stocks. And if you're not, you will be held accountable. So why would Joel Cessna put the Wolves into the Internet Strategies Fund? Entered into evidence in the case was this internal Merrill Lynch memo obtained by the I-Team. In it, a Merrill vice president tells brokers that only 20% of you dropped a ticket so far, that is, signed up clients for the Internet Strategies Fund. It urges, let your clients participate at some level in this compelling theme. The author of the memo worked for this man, David Ruckman, the highest ranking Merrill Lynch official in Ohio. Ruckman's daughter, Nicole Elizabeth Dobbins, was the wholesaler for the Internet Strategies Fund, meaning every time a broker such as Joel Cessna sold the Internet Strategies Fund, it could benefit Ruckman's daughter. Did you feel pressure? Again, I can't comment on it. You know, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a situation that just, you know, I've been advised not to, not to comment. That's wrong. That's nepotism. If somebody's going to invest in a stock or a fund, it's got to be on the basis of the merit of the fund, not that somebody's daughter is getting a kickback. Some people have suggested that there was pressure on brokers because the Internet Strategies Fund wholesaler was your daughter. Is there any truth to that, sir? Absolutely not. When you found out about the relationship between Mr. Ruckman at Merrill in Cleveland and his daughter and this Internet Strategy Fund, what did you think? I thought that we'd been betrayed. Uh, by our broker. Merrill Lynch calls the relationship between Ruckman and his daughter a red herring. 
The company says father and daughter worked for different units of Merrill Lynch and that there was no conflict of interest. The Wolves may be the first of the current cases from rural Ohio to go to arbitration. It almost certainly won't be the last. Attorney Jake Zemanski said he's had inquiries from retirees at both East Ohio Gas and Goodyear. And he has several other cases from Rubbermaid retirees, including the case of Bonnie Burns. Her time with her grandson is now limited because Bonnie had to find a new job after her 32 years of retirement savings almost vanished. Merrill Lynch says Burns chose to invest more aggressively, consistent with how she invested before becoming a client. She too went to Joel Cessna and she too says she asked for conservative investments but was invested in part in the Internet Strategies Fund. I worry about it a lot. I've sat and cried about it a lot and then I get really mad at myself for being so stupid. It's embarrassing to know that this had happened to me. Do you feel used, Bonnie? Yes, I do. I guess the only thing that I could say is, is Merrill Lynch does everything by the book. I think the man should, should have the opportunity to walk into the shoes of the people that, that he's created and uh, experience what we had to experience. Bill Scheel, Fox 8 IT.